when it comes to the topic of project cars, there are plenty of crazy ideas. You know, engine swaps, uh, twin turbo this, supercharge that, nitrous this, you know, whatever. My dream idea for a project has always been the same. And it's been to put my favorite kind of engine into a car, a gas turbine. My favorite vehicles of all time have turbine engines. My favorite motorcycle, the Y2K from Marine Turbine Technologies. My favorite race car, the Helmet TX. But it's one of those things that's just such a niche thing to do that there aren't that many people who know how to do it. There aren't that many people who have done it. And it's one of those things that is just, at best, a pain in the ass to fit to a vehicle because turbines just aren't suited to that. And this is something which some companies are already experimenting with, so clearly the opportunity is there. Most recently, Aerial, with the hypercar concept, they're doing this exact thing, but on a much more powerful scale than I would like to do. And also, uh, Tech Rules, I believe it was, had a concept, I'm not sure how they're coming along with that one. But essentially what my idea is, is to take this car, which is Aid, my 68 Lincoln Continental. At the moment, it's a 7.6 V8, three-speed auto, rear-wheel drive. The only major change is converting it from a carburetor to a Holly Sniper fuel injection. Aside from that, it's basically just a big old classic Lincoln. So my idea was this, what if we take out the engine, take out the transmission, take out the prop, and take out the entire rear axle, you know, wheels, diff, the whole back end. So it's basically just like an empty rolling shell. Then, you can buy quite easily the entire rear axle setup from a Tesla. It doesn't have to be a Tesla, but obviously Teslas are pretty easy to find. So if I bought the rear axle setup from like a Tesla P100, you're like a, looking at a 600 horsepower electric motor. I don't recall what the torque is, but probably up around 700 foot pounds. Ridiculous numbers. Basically double the power that this engine has, except no, no transmission, direct drive to the wheels, and basically the whole thing is contained within that rear axle unit. It's like a, a cradle that holds the motor, the diff, and the prop shafts. So replace that for the back end. What most people would probably do for a rest of mod is fill up the bonnet with batteries. That's not what we're gonna be doing here. If the idea is viable at least, what I'd like to do is fill up some of the boot with battery packs, either Tesla packs or just packs from wherever you know, repurpose from other vehicles, whatever the case may be as far as compatibility. Fill up where the spare wheel was with batteries and the two side sections, and if possible, leave some of the center for luggage. The battery packs don't need to last a huge amount of range. Anything above 30 miles would be fine for me, because here's the real kicker of why I want to do this. I don't just want to make an electric Lincoln. That, you know, that, that's nothing new. Plenty of people have rested modded classics. The point of this build would be under the bonnet. Because under the bonnet, where most people would probably put a battery pack, and it is very sweaty and hot today, as you can tell, I want to drop a freestanding, diesel-burning, gas turbine generator. A very small, very modestly sized turbine. They're not difficult to find, believe it or not. There are actually a bunch of them on eBay, usually at any given time, for like two to four grand. And I only need, as far as I can tell, something that's got about 100 to 150 horsepower. So a very small, modest turbine. Use the existing fuel tank, fill it with diesel instead of petrol, uh, maybe new lines, maybe new pumps, whatever. Fire up the turbine, pump fuel from the tank to it, run it as a generator, as it usually would be. In this format, imagine if the back end of the turbine has uh, like two or three, um, not dynamos, but like alternators running off of the back of it. Then those alternators, of course, are generating power from the turbine, being run off of belts, just for the sake of imagination. Then connect power cables to those alternators running through what was the transmission tunnel of the car, straight through to the back, into the boot, connect it to the batteries, so that you start up the turbine, turbine rotates, the rotation spins up the alternators, and they send power to the batteries. You could, of course, have a safety cutoff so that when the batteries are charged, the power is either cut off completely or just sent to something else to like, waste the excess power or have a controller unit of some kind in there so it doesn't overcharge them. And then, of course, from the back end, it just operates in the way that an electric car always does. The electric Tesla back axle draws power from the batteries and gives you drive. So when you press the throttle, it sends the message to the uh, electric motor to give you acceleration. No gearbox to worry about. We could repurpose the column shift to basically just engage drive or reverse and just have that turned into a signal instead of a gear, have it be a signal being sent to the motor to reverse or drive forward. And uh, yeah, the, the brakes are obviously their own system anyway. So we could plumb that in if necessary to the back. 
And then the main thing would be controlling, obviously, cooling for the turbine. This car has a huge bonnet, as you'll see, so controlling that shouldn't be too difficult. We could even have enough excess space, potentially, to fit a number of cooling fans to both extract the heat, maybe out the bottom of the bonnet. And the only visual change, really, would be cutting a couple of holes out of the bonnet to have the turbine exhausts coming out the top. And then obviously you've got the grill at the front for the natural airflow for the turbine as well. So the turbine, how it would work in practice is you'd sit in the car, you've got the key barrel here, and what I would like it, what I'd like to happen if we could wire it up. At the moment, you get in the car like any car, you turn it one position and then you get power, you know, lights, whatever. And then you turn it second position and you've got your pump, starter motor, and fire up the engine. What I would like to happen is you get in the car, put the key in, turn it to position one, and now the car is on. You can't hear anything because it's electric power. So now power is being sent to the motor and you then put it in drive, press the throttle, silent acceleration like an electric car. But then if you click the key to position two, that begins pumping diesel to the front, sparks the turbine and starts it turning. All of the additional stuff would be plumbed in, you know, like temperature gauges, oil pressure, battery charge amount, all that kind of stuff could be added around here but that's the essential concept. So turn it on, battery power, turn it a second, uh, second notch on the key, fires up the turbine, turbine generates power, sends it to the batteries. So essentially it would be like a Fisker Karma on meth. Um, it would be an electric car that never needs to be plugged in because you're generating power with the motor at the front rather than uh, you know a power socket. So it would mean that if the batteries got low, you would never plug it in. All I would do is put more diesel in and then the diesel sent to the front and generate power. And the whole reason why I'd love to do it is because it's one of the only really viable ways of having a turbine in a car without having the drawbacks. Because if the turbine is freestanding, it's never driving the wheels and it's never being used to propel the car. It's only being used to generate electricity and that's it. So you could slap a diesel generator under there if you wanted to, but I just want it to be cooler than that. I want to have that, you know, that, that distinctive turbine sound but also in a practical way. I could then turn the key from being completely silent while already driving, turn the key, start the turbine, because obviously it's not attached to the wheels, so you could turn it on and off while you're already moving. And then it, you know, tick, 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 starts up, starts generating power, watch the batteries raise, and then when they're full, turn the turbine off and continue driving silently. Or for showboating or car shows, just leave the turbine running. It's keeping the batteries topped up, the excess is being rerouted so it doesn't overcharge them, so it just sounds cool. And because it's only idling, you wouldn't be using anywhere near as much diesel as if it was being used to actually drive the wheels. So that's my idea for this dream project. As far as I can tell, for the kind of turbine I'd need, it's like two to four grand. For the entire back axle of a Tesla, you're looking at like four and a half, five grand. Battery packs, it depends. You know, it depends what batteries you use, how many of them. I don't know how many batteries I would need to get at least 30 miles or so of range. I don't know if it's something I'll ever be able to get done, which is why I want to discuss it with the garage. But it, it's certainly something that I'd love to do. And uh, the ironic thing is it would probably end up being more efficient than the V8 that's under there at the moment. <laughs> you would probably have better fuel use. Uh, a tank would certainly last longer. And like I said, that's essentially how um, a Fisker Karma operates. The Fisker Karma has an electric motor to drive the wheels, but then a two-litre Ford engine, I believe it is, or no, a two-litre GM engine under the bonnet, which burns petrol to generate power for it. So it's kind of like a more exotic version of a Prius, except this one has a jet engine basically providing electricity, and then a 600 horsepower Tesla back end providing crazy performance with direct drive. I don't know ultimately if this idea could work, but at least in concept, it's sound. We'll have to see if it can work or not. Like I said, I want to discuss it with the garage, see how viable it is. But ultimately, we'll have to wait and see. But that's it for my idea for a project. And of course, I'll have to uh, fill you guys in if it is something that's possible, if it's something that I can come back to and try to attempt. And if there are any additional pitfalls in it, I guess we'll find out. Uh, I think it would, with a project like this, it would be some of the smaller details that would probably become a pain potentially, like, you know, interfacing power production, uh, trying to get the right balance between how much power the turbine is producing and how much power the motors are actually using, so you don't undercharge or overcharge it. But we'd have to see, I guess, ultimately. A jet-powered Lincoln, technically. Not jet-driven, but jet-powered, because the jet is providing the power. And, uh, yeah.
we'll have to see. Ultimately, that's it for this vid. We'll see if it ever comes to fruition. And, I'll see, and until next time, I guess I'll see you then. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.